Hello, this screencast is going to show you how to find and use primary sources for your 7th grade history research project. What is a primary source? Well, a primary source or original source is an artifact such as a photograph or painting, document, diary, manuscript such as a speech, interview, or letter, autobiography, recording like somebody speaking or a video, or any other source of information that was created at the time under study. Therefore, if I am studying the Voting Rights Act of 1965, it is an artifact, document, diary, manuscript, autobiography, or recording from 1965. So looking ahead, you will need to have three primary sources for your project at a minimum. You can have more. The more the better, really, but three at a minimum. One primary source is for Heart of the Story. I'm going to show you how to do that today or during the screencast. One primary source for historical context, and that can be for either the subtopic of background or buildup. You pick. And one primary source for impacts, either short-term or long-term. Again, you pick. So, examples. This is an artifact. This is a painting from the time of the Voting Rights Act um, that shows people voting. And I could analyze this because it was made in 1965. This is a photograph from in and around 1965 and shows people to asking people to register to vote after the Voting Rights Act. So I could analyze that. This is a document and this particular document is the actual Voting Rights Act of 1965. I could analyze this to see the actual language that was used. Manuscripts are helpful. This is a letter to a congressperson asking to enact the Voting Rights Act or allowing African Americans to vote. And this is, a, is the speech that President Johnson gave to Congress about the Voting Rights Act. This is an autobiography by James Farmer, who's a civil rights activist who lived through the Voting Rights Act of 1965. And this is a recording of President Johnson speaking to Congress about the Voting Rights Act of 1965. That's President Johnson. That is Hubert H. Humphrey, the senator from Minnesota. Okay, this is the lesson plan that's on Veracross. Today, before you even get into primary sources, you need to make sure that you complete editing and organizing your notes. After that, you're going to locate, introduce, include, and explain a primary source. Just one. So we're going to skip down. After you've organized and edited your notes, you're going down to activity four you're doing right now because you're watching the screencast. But activity five is primary source, and you're finding one primary source for heart of the story. It says click period to arrive at the primary source assignment on Google Classroom. You simply click your period. I'll get back to that in a second. Homework, primary source, a single primary source on heart of the story is due 5-4 for 2-4 and 5-5 for periods 1, 3, and 7. And any missing work, you have a little bit of time here to get caught up. This primary source assignment won't take that long. So use the time to get caught up. Now back to this. I'm going to click the link of my class period and it will take me to this that's on Google Classroom. And this link here has a lot of stuff on it that I want to show you, so let's get into that. So here is the link on Classroom for Primary Source, Heart of the Story. First thing you need to know is that this sign-in document will take you to your note-taking Google Doc. And then you have a bunch of different sources here. These are search engines to get you started with your primary document search. I'm going to show you how to use a number of these. So the first one is called Our Documents. This one can be a little tricky. you got to click Search. And then you can put your topic in and search it. And it's got a whole host of things I could search and look for that are pertaining to the Voting Rights Act. But going right here, this is the actual act itself. Life has teamed up with Google for images. And if I put the Voting Rights Act in here, sometimes it takes me to this. I have to search it again. And there it popped up. There is a great image in here. This one right here, it says Jim Crow is dead, and then it shows um, these two women registering to vote. So that can be good because you can use images. Um, the Avalon Project, if I go to the 20th century, because that's when my event took place in 1965, and I scroll all the way down to find my event. So you could look through all of these. I find Voting Rights Act of 1965, and there it is. Here's the actual act itself. 
Um, another search engine is Spartacus. Now this one can be really helpful, but at the same time kind of tricky. So I've put a voted, Voting Rights Act of 1965. It's going to take me to a different, it's going to take me to a place where I can pick from a menu. And then it gives me a little bit of secondary source information. But then if I scroll down, I got primary sources underneath here. Now these aren't the actual primary sources, but it's a good launching off point. So for example, this says that, um, I believe this is, was a letter that was written back to home, to uh, somebody who was part of the rallying for the Voting Rights Act, wrote a letter home saying what was happening at the time as a result of the protesting. This is um, a letter that was, or a statement that was made to a newspaper following the murder of somebody who was participating in some of the rallies for the Voting Rights Act. This is the speech by Lyndon Baines Johnson about the Voting Rights Act. Now I can take these documents and usually what I tell students to do is just highlight the whole thing like this, copy it, and then search it. See if you can find the actual document itself. So this is a good launching off point. All right, next we have the National Archives. If I use this, I would just simply put in Voting Rights Act. And here it brings me to a list of sources for the Voting Rights Act. Like I have a transcript of a debate that went on between um, two probably Congress people over the Civil Rights Act or the Voting Rights Act. Here I have the actual Voting Rights Act itself or the files that are on it so I can find primary sources here. The final one, which is the one I really like, is the National Archives. I can go here, put in Voting Rights Act, and then I can search through this menu here and I like the top one and it explains what the Voting Rights Act is which could you know serves, serves as a secondary source in itself and then it's got a list of primary sources one that I really liked was a letter and this is actually the one that I'm going to use so this is a letter from this Mrs. Jackson and she's writing her congressperson about the need for a Voting Rights Act. And by reading this letter, I was able to tease out a lot of information about what 1965 was like. So the letter says, Dear Sir, um, you, for God's sakes, help the poor, innocent people in Selma, Alabama. If your voice or vote can be of service, now is the time to use it. We can't sit by any longer and watch the shocking events in Alabama. Send troops there, send troops there to Alabama, not overseas, and protect those people's right to vote. It's sickening, it's sickening, it's sickening and as a mother of four sons, I can't stand it any longer to think that one day my sons could lose their lives protecting those ignorant people down there is unbelievable. Sincerely, Miss Jackson. And this tells me a lot. So when I go now, I'd go here and I'd click on sign in, which is going to get me to my note-taking Google Doc. I'm going to analyze that letter. Oops. So first thing you want to do is label it primary source one heart of the story and I'm going to go up here and make it a heading and then it appears down here in my menu and because I want everything to be consistent I'm going to highlight it yellow. Now below that I want to create a table and eventually this table will be populated by ideas for right now Here's my table, and you can see it's one, two, three, four, five, six, twelve total boxes, and I've slid this over to the side, and you're going to see why. Now, in my first box, I want to put the type of document, and mine is a letter. Second box is the primary source name. In this case, it's Mrs. Jackson's letter to a Congress person. 
And here is the URL. So I would go back and copy this URL up here and I paste it into my document. Then you're going to be doing something called introducing it. And introducing this particular primary source, I just write down in more detail what it is. Ms. Jackson wrote a letter on March 8th, 1965 to the chairman of the House Judiciary Committee, Emanuel Seller. It was written the day after Bloody Sunday in Selma, Alabama, and I got that information, folks, from right here. It told me where the letter came from. After I introduce, then I need to include, and that means include the actual quote, the evidence, or the data. And in her letter to Mr. Seller, Mrs. Jackson stated the following. So I took an actual quote, send troops there, Selma, Alabama, not overseas, and protect those people's right to vote. I think that one day my sons could lose their lives protecting those ignorant people down there is unbelievable. So that's the quote I chose to use from that particular primary source. Now I need to analyze it. And that is explain. So I'm explaining it. And this letter reveals three important things about American life in and around the time of the Voting Rights Act of 1965. Remember, you use primary sources to see what life was like. First, the country was very divided. She refers to the law enforcement in Selma and their supporters as ignorant, not wanting her children to stand up for a country that also has people in it that endorse racism. So the country was really divided over segregation at the time. Second, the media was a powerful tool for the civil rights movement, for it showed the brutality and violence that was used to enforce Jim Crow laws and deny rights to African Americans. Mrs. Jackson wouldn't have been shocked if she didn't see this on television. And then finally, it identifies how black agency or African Americans exercise, exercising their civil rights is often met with racist violence. So this is the table you're gonna to wanna to create. You're gonna have all these titles on the left side and then you're gonna to wanna to respond to those in here. And you wanna be as detailed as possible so you can really wrap your head around the particular primary source. And the real challenging part is right here in the explaining what the actual quote or what the actual Google do or document is saying. All right, thank you very much.